the SCDAA put out this provider advisory um, towards the end of March. Did you want to sort of take me through that and what you think are the highlights and what's most important for providers to take away from this document? Absolutely. So as soon as the COVID-19 pandemic became a re reality in our country, um, many weeks ago, in March, I think it, it really dawned on us that this was going to be a real problem. Uh, the Medical and Reach Advisory Committee, which is a standing committee of the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America, um, got together on a call. And we very quickly uh, came to an agreement that one of the most important things we needed to do was to develop a set of advice, one for patients and families affected by sickle cell disease, uh, and also a companion provider advisory, healthcare provider advisory that helped providers understand uh, sickle cell disease and the, the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the critical uh, clinical issues that needed to be addressed. Uh, just to touch upon them very briefly, I think one of the very early messages we wanted to get across was that we would be able to allow individuals living with sickle cell disease to stay home as much as possible but understand that they need ongoing care. And so our focus was to give guidance on how to manage patients with sickle cell disease remotely. It was possible. So that was number one, um, to try to manage them remotely over the telephone or telemedicine in, in any way possible to minimize their chances of getting infected with COVID-19 which is a nice segue into the second overarching uh, message, which was, what do, we, what do we do if we suspect a, an individual with sickle cell disease has COVID-19 infection? What are the things we need to be looking for? It was our belief at the time that they were probably likely more at risk for severe COVID-19 infection and manifestations, um, primarily because of their susceptibility something called the acute syndrome, which is a lung problem. And as emerging COVID-19, and it uh, affects lungs in, in all persons, we were very concerned that COVID-19 infection superimposed on the acute chest syndrome in somebody with sickle cell disease could make for a very bad clinical outcome. So those, those were our primary focuses.